Okay. Okay. Shall we get started? Okay. Good evening. I'd like to call the Whateley School Committee meeting to order for December 2nd, 2013, 7 o'clock. Matt Fortune, this is Chris Sibley, Don Skrosky. We have ably assisted by our principal, Peter, Peter Crisofulli, our superintendent, Marty Barrett, and business manager, Patty Cavanaugh. And so we'd like to start with a review and approval of the minutes for November 4th. I move uh, we accept the minutes of November 4th. I will second that. Any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Approved. And then we turn to uh, Patty for a financial statement, please. <clears throat> you have before you the November financial statement, and we have no new variances to report. Um, we do have eight warrants to, to sign tonight. We have the November uh, fiscal agent payroll, our, an encumbered warrant from, um, from invoices that were uh, encumbered in last fiscal year. We have our November monthly expenses. We have a school lunch warrant, an after school warrant, the read grant expenses, <coughs> school choice, which is a tuition payment, and circuit breaker, which pays for our sped transportation. Um, the only other thing I wanted to bring to your attention was that we did get notified last week that our school lunch program was approved for a, a six cents uh, increase per meal because our menus now are approved and following the Healthy Kids Act uh, meal pattern menu. So we will be getting some additional funding there. Does that come from the state or for the federal government? Both. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Patty? Thank you very much. Let's move on to public comment. You guys are awesome. <laughs> All right, are we spe are we loud enough for you tonight? Um, well, I, I'd say do project. Okay. That will help. That will always help. Thank you. Okay, under unfinished business, we have a couple of discussion items. One involves outdoor lighting, and one involves the sprinkler mm -hmm. system. Pete, would you be presenting <coughs> those? Or? I can, I, can, I can tell you what I am. Maybe together we can yeah. bring you in a little bit. Um, let's take the one about the sprinkler system mm -hmm. first, which mm -hmm. is there really is no news. Um, the, we haven't needed any repairs, uh, at least since the last time you asked, and, and since before then too, I believe. Um, we've certainly been spending some money in the building on uh, other items that have come up. I think we informed you folks about some of the refrigeration issues we had over the summer. We've had some uh, heating system work done, <coughs> you know, where again, just the age of the system. We've had a few things that need to be replaced, um, circulators and things of that nature. But, um, but as far as the sprinkler system is concerned, there have been no issues now in, in quite some time. Knock on wood. Um, so um, we are still in a position where the town is holding mm -hmm. the appropriation uh, from the last uh, town meeting of sixty thousand dollars, and. Um, uh, there are some options moving forward about what we might want to do with that. Maybe Marty could address that part of it. But at the moment, uh, the system has been stable. Basically, the treasurer said that they would ask Lynn Sibley, um, you know, before he put it back into the main budget. So uh, their suggestion was just to let it sit there, um, sort of in a savings account, until uh, it became necessary to spend it. Um, are there questions? No. I, I mean, there was one item that had been identified. My problem is I can't remember the name. The accelerator, I think. Is that it? That you had said would need replacing no matter what. And I'm wondering if that had been, is, is that, has that been replaced or is that something we now think we don't need to replace? Uh, that's a good question. I do remember talking to you about the accelerators, mm -hmm. and those are a part of the sprinkler system. I will double check that for you because I, I think those may have been replaced. And it would, if they were, it didn't come out of the appropriation. It came out yes, of the current right. operating budget because we certainly haven't accessed any of that appropriation. Right. <coughs> uh, but I will double check on that for you and, and get back to you with the, the answer to that question because I do know those were slated for replacement. Right. That's that's my primary concern. Not. Okay. Make sure that happens or has happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, and outdoor light, outdoor lighting. Uh, yeah, Bob has asked um, for some estimates. He hasn't gotten them um, as of yet, so I don't have any costs to bring to you. I, frankly, when I um, talked to Pete afterwards, and we realized the time of year that most of the large evening events occur, that area on the other side of the island is lit. Um, Bob 
estimates that to do some outdoor lighting on that side is going to be rather expensive. So, um, so there's no power that goes across to the other side of the island mm -hmm. now. So putting any lighting out there, short of solar lighting, would you know, which in and of itself would have some cost. Um, there's going to be some cost involved. And I think what Marty's point was that um, there's only a few events that happen here that really require a lot of parking across the way. As you may have noticed coming in tonight, busy basketball night, mm -hmm. lots of vehicles out front, not many vehicles in the parking lot where it's lit. Certainly town meeting and other things that happen in the evening, you know, um, could happen during that time of year when it gets dark early. The, the, the places that are lit seem to be lit well enough you know, to get around. I think it's the issue is when you have to walk to a car that's parked in an unlit spot is when things get a little dicey out there. But I will bring you estimates when you get there. Right. And he's looking at estimates for lighting <clears throat> this side of that island as well? Or? I think that mm, when, prime, Yeah, when we walked out there, it was on the other side. Yeah, primarily mm -hmm. lighting yeah. the places that aren't <coughs> where mm -hmm. people may go park um, when there's a bigger event. Uh, open house tends to not be, well, you know, open house, we do have people parking across the way, but it still happens early enough in the year where it's not quite that mm -hmm. dark when it's over. Well, it usually runs from 6 to 7, and that's early October, so it's not terrible at that time of year. But I, I think the thinking is, what's the, you know, sort of the cost-benefit, if you will? How often do we have folks parking on the other side of the island where lighting would be required? Well, it's not that often. Of course, it wouldn't hurt if we were able to afford it to have the extra lighting for safety, et cetera. Um, but I think that's the issue at hand. And I know some constituents had written about having trouble with seeing the curve or tripping or falling. Mm -hmm. and, and so I thought, I don't remember precisely where she was talking about you know, um, if that would be something that is actually lit now or is. It could be, or if that's what you're talking about. I don't know exactly side. where it occurred either. I so. guess we would have to ask right. that person who wrote to us where exactly she was parked. But but generally speaking, if you're parked in the lot or right. along the front of the building here, there's adequate lighting there. And right. those, and I'm parked in the back by the loading dock tonight. And in fact, thought about it as I was parking. You know, right. how does the light feel here? And there is a spotlight on the back of the building. There's a nearby post that's lit. And so if you're parking where where if you're parking in the parking lot, which is the approved mm -hmm. parking, there's there's lighting, and there's lighting on the walkway in. The front technically is really a bus lane, you know, so after hours mm -hmm. people park there anyway, and that's lit. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you know, it's lit all the way down to the road on one side, uh, and that tends to be overflow parking too. So what we have is an overflow parking lighting issue on the other side of the island. Mm -hmm. That might be one way to describe it, is that it's really a, a lighting issue for overflow parking. Perhaps they could look into some sort of temporary lighting something that could be put out on events it doesn't require well the other thing that we could wiring. the other thing we could consider is painting the curb in a in a like a yellow color fluorescent color flu i've seen it you know luminescent like a, a yellow so to, yeah. to discern the uh, curb from the sidewalk right. we can also consult with our highway folks sure i'm sure that keith bardwell would be happy to talk to us about any ideas he may have to mm -hmm safer for everyone. All right, thank you very much. I look forward to hearing those estimates and some other creative possibilities. Um, we don't have any, um, yeah, I guess now we would move on to our new business discussion items, right? And, and those include the budget and the transportation bid. And, um, I don't know what order you'd like to take those in, but we also have a vote regarding the transportation bid. Is it your preference that we do the bid first? Since Why not? Okay. Sure. <clears throat> so in October, uh, we went out to bid for a new five-year transportation contract. We participated in a joint bid with six other Franklin County schools and school districts. We were able to use a grant to offset the cost of the transportation consultant, who was the Flay Hive Consulting Group. The bid opening was Tuesday, November 19th at the Franklin County Technical School. There were two bids, two separate and distinct bids. One was for individual school district awards and the other was a collective bid for all schools and districts. We received two bids on the individual bid and one bid on the collective. 
Because the individual bids were lower than the collective bid, we'll only be looking at the individual bids. Um, the two bids received were from Gribco, who is our current contractor, and Kosmeskis Inc. from Gilmass. And as you can see on the chart, there's a big disparity between the, bid, the two bids. Um, if we go with Gribco, our regular transportation will increase uh, by $7,155 in the first year, or 18.55%. The Comescus bid would increase our transportation cost by $85,635, or 222%. Um, so what we're looking at is Waitley Elementary. We have two buses, Waitley 1 and Waitley 2. We're currently paying $107.13 per bus per day. Um, that would go up to $127 uh, per bus per day, or a total annual cost of $45,720. Uh, the Kometskis bid would be $345 per bus per day, or a total cost of $124,200. Um, if you go to page three, this bid also included pricing for individual items, um, and Waitley is the last um, Square there. So if we wanted the buses, if we required the buses to have a GPS system, that would be $28 per bus per day. Um, if we required um, the vendor to use drop chains on the buses, that would be $12 per bus per day. Or if we want digital camera systems, that would be $9 per bus per day. So um, we're going to need to take two votes, one for the contract and one if you want any of the additions on the buses. Um, the, the new contract will also call for a COLA increase in years two to five. Uh, this increase will be based on the consumer price index uh, for the northeast urban area. This is the same stipulation we have in our current contract, and it could move our daily bus fee either up or down depending on the index. I was able to research the past three years, we've had increases of 1.95% uh, based on that income uh, that it indexed for this year. Uh, the prior year we increased 3.05 percent and for fiscal year 12 it was 1.97 percent uh, so we did have two low years and then a little spike there in the middle the other cost factor in this contract is the fuel escalation clause an adjustment is implemented when there is a greater than 10 percent um, variation from the base price of the fuel for this contract, the base will be $3.02 per gallon, and this is the New York Journal of Con Commerce low tank wagon price for Boston Terminal Ultra Low Sulfur Diesel for September of 2013. The only difference from our current contract is right now we do this calculation annually, and now it will be done monthly, and we don't have the 10% variation. So this should save us a few dollars in what we have been paying in fuel us as long as our prices stay pretty consistent. Are there questions for Patty? The only question I have is how come it's coming, the bid's coming up at this time of year? Usually it comes up in the summer. Well, the bid, um, the bid is done June of, this, of 2014. So the counties wanted to go out early, hoping that the earlier we went out, the better prices we could get. Because um, the bus ordering, if, if our vendors had to order new buses, that has to be done in January for them. So we wanted to get our bid out good, uh, good and early so that we could, you know, jump the, ahead of the other systems. Okay, that makes sense. Chris? I think we're also, I'm also with questions. I have, I have a couple. Um, what does the drop chains mean? <coughs> and is it something the administration would recommend? For snow removal. Uh, snow. For, for traveling in the snow. Yeah. I don't think in Waitley. I think it's more an issue for Conway uh, and the hill towns that would need the drop chains. I don't believe we currently use drop chains now. You're talking about tire tr chains? Tire chains. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so okay. <clears throat> I'm just confused then. Uh, if that's the case, is we only pay it when they use them? Correct. Okay, so the annualized cost is just an estimate. Right. Yeah, it's not every day. Right. Do you have many uh, dirt roads on wait? Maybe? Just yeah. a few. Uh, do we have a few? Two, two three? Yeah. Does the bus travel on them? Or uh, road, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Not anymore. Yeah. yeah, so we are not traveling on those. Right. If the highway department has it recommended chains. Um, 
Okay. And whose discretion would the chains be put on? Right? The transportation. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm, it says pricing per day. It sounds like to carry those chains, they're charging us $12. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I, yeah I, I would have to find out if it would be for every day of the contract, we'd have to pay for the chains for them to get them, or, I, or if it would be on the days that they were used, yeah. utilized. Because, you know, if I'm looking at that, it looks like That's we're right. getting charged $12, $12 yeah. a day to have those chains installed on the bus. For an annual well, cost. Well, mo most of the drop chains, which are on school buses now, where air, they drop. They're mm -hmm. already mounted on the bus permanently, mm -hmm. and then they drop. Oh, okay. You oh, don't so have it would to be actually, every day. You don't have to mm -hmm. actually have to put them on the wheels anymore. Right. So it would actually be every day then. Yeah, right. Yeah. Twenty six to thirty two thousand dollars. Yeah. And and so the cost probably represents right. all of their costs for having those added to their buses. Correct. Yeah, and it's probably uh, probably close to thousand dollars a set. Mm -hmm. I'm just guessing. Right. Is is there a desire from the administration side to have either a GPS system or a digital camera system? I don't know how you feel about cameras, certainly not GPS, but <clears throat> I haven't heard of, of any outrageous behaviors no, like, in the district yeah, that have necessitated. I wouldn't think we would need cameras on the buses. Yeah. I do believe we have the ability to put them on the buses should there be a pro should a problem arise, but these would be on um, continually. I mean, like any mm -hmm. school and any school bus, there right. are minor problems that happen on the bus sometimes, <coughs> but nothing that would warrant, you know, the ongoing use of a camera. Mm -hmm. So uh, my inclination would be to go with the recommendation not to Mind consider you. those additions or not to exclude so. those. Well, I'll move that we accept Gripco's bid at $127 a day uh, with the stipulations uh, so noted, and that we take no action on the GPS drop chains or camera. Uh, I'll second that. All, right, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And I do have a copy of the bid here with me if anybody wanted to look at it. And this, now that brings us to the proposed FY15 mm -hmm. budget. You have your binders in front of you. And what we are presenting tonight for the FY15 budget is a budget in the amount of $1,590,329. This is an increase from this current year of $73,203 or 4.83%. We also have some major changes in both our school choice funding and our circuit break for funding, which we'll take a look at after we review the changes for our proposed budget. So I'm on page <coughs> one of nine in section A of the budget, <clears throat> and we'll go through the salary related costs. We have an increase in the co cost of contract adjustments and steps in the amount of $42,511. This is a salary increase for teachers and instructional assistants that was um, negotiated at 2% for FY15. We have nine teachers who are stepping still stepping through the um, steps, and one who moved to step 20. We have 12 instructional assistants who are still stepping. This also includes two reclassifications of teachers and instructional assistants. We moved the reading instructor, re reading instructor from the um, instructional assistant category to the teaching category. And we also moved one special education IA to the general instruction IA. So you, when you look at the details, you might see some big swings, but that's what those are. Um, we added two hours per week of um, adaptive PE teaching services. We eliminated two part-time physical therapy positions, and we replaced it with one contracted physical therapy. We eliminated $250 in cafeteria salaries and we reclass the summer custodial wages from maintenance of building to the custodial salary line. We have another increase um, in the SPED substitutes of $2,300. This current year, we had reduced this line item because we thought it, had, it was being used for substitute teachers and it's actually being used for substitute IAs, so we do have to replace it. 
um, so we have to put that money <coughs> in. We have an increase in our retirement incentives of $16,025. Um, we had no retirements this year. Next year we have one. Um, the retirement will happen in fiscal year 14, but the payment happens in fiscal year 15. And then we have a decrease in our contract adjustments of $3,039, and this was um, due to the budgeting in the FY14. We budgeted for both union and non-union, and next year we just have to budget for non-union. Other operational increases, we have $300 in Nature's Classroom. This is due to the contracted stipends for teachers, which increased from $50 per night to $100. We have an increase in professional <coughs> development stipends of $32.50. This increase is due to the new contractual obligation of $150 per year for each instructional assistant. We also increased um, the budgeted amount for teachers' professional development to equate to the number of teachers times the annual allowance of $600. This line had previously been under budget. We have an increase in evaluations and other services of $2,225, and this is due to uh, required services in uh, students' IEPs. We have an increase in the computer registers of $1,000. Uh, this was due to the elimination of the standalone server to cloud computing hosted by Redeker for our student database. We have discussed that as a variance uh, earlier in the year. <coughs> We have an increase in our school electricity account of $1,500 due to an increase in our utilization in FY13. The increase in transportation should be about $7,345. This was due to the contract that you just approved, increasing from 107 to 127 plus an estimate for the fuel escalation. And an increase in instructional hardware of $6,625. This was um, the year two amount um, for the technology plan that you approved uh, last year. Operational decreases. We have a decrease due to Waitley's percentage of the, of the expenditures reducing from 10.62% down to 9.84. But overall, the expenses for the superintendent's uh, office have increased for salaries, health insurance, and district network expenses. We have a decrease in summer school tuitions of 335, and this reduction was based on the actual summer tuition we paid this year. We have a decrease in waste removal of $460. This was due to a new negotiated rate of $120 per month and a reduction in um, unscheduled pickups. We have a decrease in the MAS dues of $550. The savings here are due to us using a new allocation method that more exactly matches the way that we're charged by MASC. So it actually uh, was a decrease for Waitley in $550. And we have a decrease in the principal's insurance for $57. And again, that was based on the actual premiums we paid this year. So our total uh, operational increase is 73,203 or 4.83%. If you'll turn the page, we can look at the um, school choice budget. Right now our school choice students make up approximately 30%, 36% of our student population. For FY13, that brought in revenue in the amount of $326,940. Because the revenue was over our projection of $275,000, we begin the year with a healthy balance of $230,805. We're projecting revenue for FY15 in the amount of $288,000. This takes into account 52 students and in an increment for school choice students receiving SPED services. What we are proposing for expenditures for FY15 is one day of guidance at $14,026, two days of speech services in the amount of $25,441, one day of the psychologist services in the amount of $13,622, 25% of a SPED teacher salary in the amount of $15,819, SPED aids in the amount of $124,875, and contracted occupational therapy services um, in that total 5040 that's a total of 198,823, which would leave us a balance of 319,982 at the end of the year this is the healthiest balance Waitley's had in their school choice account in many years um, and it would actually allow us to go back to spending a year in arrears as the other union schools do um, currently we <coughs> spend our current revenue in the current year um, so the other thing we could do with such a large balance is to reduce this year's budget increase. 
I have an analysis here that shows the effect. Oh, wait, what I get us back. So we could leave the balance in there as is uh, at 319.982 and, and present the town with a budget increase of 4.83%. Or we could reduce our local budget by $50,000 of expenses and transfer them to school choice, which would lower our proposed budget to 1,540,329 or 1.53% increase. And our school choice would still have a balance of 269.982. The other option we can consider is to reduce the local budget by $100,000 of expenses and transfer them to the school choice fund, which would reduce our budget from last year to 1,493.29, and that would be a negative 1.77% increase, so it would actually be a decrease, and we would still have $219,982 in our school choice. Um, we're in a pretty good position because Having this much money and being able to spend in arrears instead of in the current year allows us to have more time to adapt to if any school choice changes should happen as far as the revenue. I mean, they haven't changed, but if we do have a decrease in the amount of school choice children, it would give, it gives us, it buffers the time for, to put the money back on the local budget. Do you believe under each of these options we would still be in that condition where we could hold the money in arrears, as you're saying? Well, we're, even with the 50000 if we're saying we're bringing in 288 mm -hmm. uh, and we'd be at 269 we're close. We're still close to being a year in arrears. I see. Um, if, we, if we do the $100,000, we are down to 220 versus 288 So right. we're cutting it a little bit. We're slicing the pie a little thinner there. I understand. Other questions for Patty at this point? Okay. The other thing before you vote on that, that I think you have to consider, and I just want to give you all the information, is that if you look at our circuit breaker projection, our circuit breaker funding is also undergoing some changes. And what's happening here is um, for FY15, we do not have any students in out of district placements. Therefore, our, re our revenue will probably decrease to only about $4,500. Um, which combined with our projected ending balance of 50505 will have 54981 to expend in 15, which I am proposing that we spend $5,000 on SPED transportation and 75% of a SPED teacher uh, salary in the amount of 47456 This will leave us with a balance of $2,525 and no revenue coming in for FY16. So we will no longer have this fund and we will have to pick up the 52,456 adjusted for salary increases and, tr and spent transportation costs. That would have to go back over to either school choice or the local budget in F for FY16. So I just wanted you to be aware of that before you voted on changing your balance in your school choice account. We will also get um, some an educational aid that will be paid from the 94-142 grant. We have a partial kindergarten aid salary in the amount of 67.42, and our preschool tuition should offset about 21,550 of our preschool teacher salary. The next pages are just the detailed line item budget, and if you go to page eight of nine, you can see that the proposed, you can see the number for the FY 2015 proposed budget is the 1,9, 1,593.29 with the increase at 73,203 and the percentage of 4.3%. <coughs> percent. So it, we are tied out. And the last page here just gives us a summary of our funding sources. So even though our local budget will be 1,593,29, the total amount spent by Waitley will be 1,933,256. 82.26% of that would come from the town appropriation. 10.28% would come from school choice, 1.3% would come from state and federal grants, 2.71% would come from circuit breaker, 1.111 would be early childhood tuitions, and 2.33% from school lunch. The rest of the budget is the detailed, uh, gives you the detailed line items uh, for what each of the lines is used for. 
And that is all I have for you tonight if you have any questions. We would like to take an action on the school choice. So what are you proposing for action on the school choice? Tonight? I just, um, well, if, if you don't want to, we would have to adjust our budget before it went to the town. So if you were right. considering either option one or option two, um, it would be good if we could do that so that we can get the numbers reworked. And Marty, can you remind us of the timetable we're working under this? Sure. Um, your next meeting in January, you have your uh, vote on the budget, on the details of the budget. And I don't have the town meetings as of yet. I'm looking for the timetables that were given out last month. So January 6th, you begin your budget deliberations, um, continue them in February, and more articles um, are due in February. You hold a public hearing on March 3rd. So you've got some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd just not move on, to not move on that tonight. Um, your recommendation. to look at this. Mm -hmm. Look at this and consider these options at right. our um, next meeting. Yeah, Chris, you know, we're not going to, we don't even have to vote it next the meeting. Same exact you know, we've got time. Right. Yeah. I'd like to go with the sense of the uh, mm -hmm. committee if that's That's fine uh, with me. And I think one thing, too, to keep in mind, this is sort of a, a perfect storm this year in that you had um, all of the uh, instructional assistant contracts on the elementary and secondary level and all the teacher contracts on the elementary and secondary level. All were... Um, changed and voted last spring. Mm -hmm. So all of those new conditions are taking place, along with the five-year bus contract is taking place. So, um, Well, I'll let's hope that we're not actually <laughs> being swamped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but just keep those in mind as you look at the details. Did you include a, uh, our percentages on the assessments? Oh, no. You I, don't? I forgot. I will send them to you via email tomorrow. I'm just curious, you know, how we sounded like we went down. And you did, 9.84 from 10.62. I will email those out tomorrow. I'm so sorry I forgot to put those in there. So you did go down slightly. All right. Are there any other questions? That will reopen discussion on the budget at our next meeting, which will be in... January, January, I believe on, it was the 6th, if that's what I just said, I think. Yes, January 6th. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, now we would move on to reports. Um, I don't particularly have a report, uh, but I guess I did go to the MASC yes. meeting, yes, <laughs> uh, and, and voted mm -hmm. in favor of all the uh, resolutions that were put forward and our frontier representative did the same. Uh, if you're interested in getting those, they're available either online or I can talk with you further. Um, I think we can <coughs> expect speedy action on none of them. Um, but <laughs> we're on record. All right. And um, I don't know, Marty, if you have anything else you wanted to add about the, um, about the meeting itself. I actually talked a little bit about it um, oh, at last month's okay. yeah, meeting, so I think anything I'd say now would be redundant. Okay. Yep, my report is in front of you, and uh, it's very brief. It's really just a fun report this month about uh, some upcoming events. I want to highlight for the viewing audience and for you gentlemen here at the table that, uh, as you know, um, we have been... Uh, before my time, we, we was always welcoming of the folks in the arts community, and certainly in the time that I've been here, we've reached out to the folks in the arts community and really brought a lot of great performers to our school for our kids to see, to learn from, uh, and to, to get excited about. Uh, so we do, more than ever, our kids are faced with a lot of academics and rigorous academics, so when, it, when we have the opportunity to put the arts in front of our students, we really want to and enjoy doing that. and uh, and. It occurred to me that it's really a, a, an effort that comes from a lot of places. Um, the smallest allocation is a little bit of money in our budget each year 
Um, it's about 500 bucks that the Waitley taxpayers approve every year in our budget that I get to spend on arts-related events. But the bulk of the money that we spend comes from either our PTO that allocates uh, um, a little over $1,000 every year, about $1,200 a year. And over the past couple of years, we've also had the good fortune of being funded by the Waitley Cultural Council to the tune of about a couple of thousand dollars a year. And just to give you an idea, um, this year, uh, beginning in January, we will have um, uh, several really wonderful artists that will visit our school. One is a Waitley resident named Mr. G, and Mr. G is a Grammy-nominated um, children's recording artist. He's been here once before. We're bringing him back this year. Uh, quite frankly, it's a demand uh, or a command performance or whatever that's called. Uh, he was so great last time that folks wanted him back one more time, and we, we asked, uh, we uh, put in a grant request with the Waitley Cultural Council, and um, uh, that money will help us bring Mr. G back. We also have uh, storyteller Rona Leventhal, who's been here many times in the past, most recently just last year. And, um, and she's also working in conjunction with our after school program with a really uh, very cool artist in residence arrangement where she's going to come to the school later this month, s tell stories to three different age groups, our youngest, the middle kids, and the oldest kids, and talk to them about what it takes to be a storyteller. Then the after school program is offering uh, several weeks <coughs> of an enrichment program where they're hiring Rona Leventhal to work with our students to teach them the art of storytelling. And as you might imagine, storytelling is very connected with um, story writing. And that is an initiative right now across our district uh, where our teachers are using the Lucy Calkins model to teach our kids how to be the best writers they can be in various genres. Um, so we think this is a really nice fit for our students. And part of what will happen during that uh, after school enrichment is that students will self-select uh, to become storytellers and then in a couple of months uh, later in the late winter Rona will come back for another day here at our school during the school day where the students will become the storytellers and, and present in an assembly and tell their stories to the rest of the students. So I just thought that was a really wonderful um, uh, way to bring the arts into the school in a way that's very germane to what they're learning as writers um, and also uh, it's a lot of fun. On top of that, we're also bringing back Roger Tinknell, who is, a, you know, sort of a local legend when it comes to children's musicians. He's been here many times. Last year was not one of the years we had him, uh, but he's coming back this year. And then finally, uh, the Tanglewood Marionettes, which I personally haven't seen, uh, but some of my staff have, and, and it's an amazingly wonderful marionette company. They have huge, big marionettes, and they put on an amazing show. Uh, our librarian media specialist, Paula King, saw one of their performances and, and you know told me we really needed to have these folks here and they are being fully funded by the Waitley Cultural Council. Thank you very much folks from the council um, for approving that funding uh, and I have invited the folks from the Cultural Council to join us on January 15th. We're having a 9.45 a.m. performance. That little card I gave you, Nat, is school committee's invitation to please join us that morning if you're available and each of you should feel free to bring a guest if you'd like to come and see the marionettes. Um, <laughs> But I really just wanted you to know what was happening sort of on that side of the fence. We talk a lot about many other things in these meetings, and I thought it would be uh, fun to fill you in on what's happening in terms of the arts in our school. And then, of course, I include the upcoming calendar for some of the things happening this month. We also have a holiday concert this month on uh, the 18th from 1.45 to 2.30. And I know you all have day jobs and can't always make it here, but if you could ever all, slip but... out. <laughs> <laughs> but if you could slip out and come join us, uh, that would be wonderful. And if you have any questions about any other items that are not on the report, I'd be glad to answer those as well. Yeah, I look forward to attending. I guess. That would be great. Right. Um, <coughs> questions for Pete? All right. Um, Marty, please. Yeah, I just have a couple of items. I wanted to bring you up to date a little bit with uh, regards to PARC or the Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Careers. Um, I had another webinar, uh, as I told you, I believe back in September, October, three of our schools were selected. Well, they didn't have enough participation, so they went to round two selection. So now we have four of the five schools selected. Um, there has been some inquiry from school committees <coughs> across the state, state about the uh, legal basis for PARC, and so the commissioner just issued this statement, which I won't read, but um, basically what that says in the next two paragraphs is that 
they are trying to come up with an assessment tool that is more reflective of assessing the Common Core standards um, and moving away from MCAS. So there's going to be a two-year pilot program beginning this spring. Um, and originally, they had talked about it being a one-year pilot. Now they're going to two years, which I think is, uh, makes more sense since they have um, given us so many uh, mandates, fast and furious, from the state. So I was, I was pleased about that. I elected that our district would not be um, um, allowed to, um, blanking on the word, but exemptions. thank you, exemptions for the um, end of the year assessments because I did not have a, a strong feeling about how the state was going to manage that data. So we're going to continue as always. We're going to take our MCAS, we're going to take the park. Um, we're not exempting anybody and um, we'll see what, what happens. It, I am curious because the month of March especially is going to be very test driven and I'd like to minimize the level of anxiety with our students as much as possible. So we don't do the rah-rah that some of the other districts do around the state and in other states, but we will definitely participate and we will expect our students to take it seriously. So. Um, I also am just bringing to your attention, and I know you've probably heard about it, that the legislator is considering increasing the uh, state's minimum wage from $8 per hour by a dollar each year until it reaches $11 per hour on January 1st, 2016. Um, this January we'll see the first increase, and this is just um, for you to be thinking of, our current step one for instructional assistance is 12.14 cents per hour. Um, whatever my experience has been, when the minimum wage rises, other things tend to go hand in hand in the future. So it's just for you to, to be made aware of. And that's what I have, unless you have questions with me. No? Okay. Marty, if I could just add sure. one thing about the park, and that is that, uh, and it's more for, for any parents who might be viewing today, is a reminder that the end of year pilot in our school is happening just in our fourth grade, and it is a no stakes assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important for folks to understand that. Yes, the students will be asked to sit down at the computer and take this assessment. Um, and it'll, it'll amount to a couple of hours of their time over a couple of days, but there are, there's really no stakes involved. It's, it's a pilot for this program, and, um, uh, and it won't affect their grades or, or anything moving forward. Just, just something to think about. And since it's one grade, we don't have a problem with the number of computers that are required. Right. We, we have um, the two schools that are participating in online testing are Conway and Waitley. The other two schools are doing pencil and paper tests. That was the state's choice, not, not yeah. ours. Um, we could have applied for an exemption had we had an issue with those two schools, but because it's just one grade per school, they're okay. This might not be something you have the answer to right away, but if, we, if the state were to adopt the park tests, which are computer-based, mm -hmm. two years from now, would we be needing to make additional computer purchases yes. at that time. Yes. We and the question on everyone's lips is how is that going to be funded and the state is going through consideration about how they're going to do that. Uh, so yeah, was, as Mr. Skrasky's <laughs> reaction um, You won't fund it. Won't yeah. Fund it. And, and frankly the state. until the mass broadband goes yeah. in and it is stable, it's not yeah. going to happen. Um, I also think that's another reason that they gave us another year. I don't think it was just kindness of their hearts. I think they realized that most, much of the state is not up and running mm -hmm. as far as computers. All right, well, we appreciate a heads up as to that. Yes, cost. we'll keep talking about it. All right, then um, if there's nothing else, I'd entertain a move to adjourn. So moved. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So.